The basic commands for motion control include the G00, which is the fast non-cutting move, and then the G01 linear travel point, and then a contour uh, control to the other point. G02, we will have a clockwise arc uh, in a plane, so a two-dimensional move. And a G03 would be the opposite, a counterclockwise arc in a plane. Now, when we talk about a move here, it's important to understand that there's a position involved in the starting point and the ending point. These are all contour control moves, the G01, G02, G03. The G00, that will depend upon the actual equipment being used and uh, how it was uh, defined in its control system. Uh, whether or not that will be a point-to-point -point or contour move. So when we look at a move of any kind, it has to be with respect to a point. And clearly, if we're going to have a point in terms of x, y, and z coordinates, we're going to have to have a coordinate system. So when you think about a coordinate system, there is a basic coordinate system, which we call the machine home, which will be your initial coordinate system, your 0, 0, 0, when you first start up the machine. And then what we can do is specify other origins. Uh, the G54 through G59 are essentially locations in memory where we will store a variety of coordinate systems with respect to the machine home. Now, once we do that, uh, we've got, for instance, 10, 15, 1, stored in G54. These coordinates are with respect to the machine home. However, I can then use this work offset as a coordinate system with respect to my G00, G01, G02, and so forth. So all the moves with respect to that will be based upon the work offset that I've specified. Now, Actually, storing that in the work offset is essentially moving the uh, tool to a certain position and then recording that position, and then we get the actual values for that position. Once I've stored those coordinates, I can use them in the program so that my moves are always with respect to a specific coordinate system. Uh, this is often useful um, based upon the datum reference frame to uh, describe a coordinate system so that all of our moves are with respect to that frame. Note here the machine home is the original coordinate system and then we can create these offsets G54s through G59s with respect to that initial coordinate system. So when we look at our coordinate system we think of identifying the location of the worth piece with respect to that system. So what you did in 248, if you recall, is you used the edge finder, and the edge finder allowed you to uh, touch off on surfaces. And when you did that, when you touched off on that surface, you were able to identify the x, y, y, z, and x, z planes uh, based upon the surfaces of the workpiece or uh, surfaces related to the fixture. Then you can store the origin based upon uh, that location, which is essentially the intersection of three planes, and now it's stored in memory. Now we can do that, repeat that for G55 and so forth, and store a number of coordinate systems. Whenever G54 appears in the program, all the absolute positions in terms of moving are with respect to that G54. Units are important to explicitly define so there's no ambiguity in terms of your motion. So it's good to set that at the beginning of your program and be consistent with your units. The don't rely upon the default of the machine. Every machine has its own default. Uh, you want to explicitly define what your units are. So G20 will correspond to all subsequent moves will be in inches. G21, all subsequent moves will be in millimeters. 
your feed rate, without a feed rate, there'll be no motion. So clearly we have to define the uh, velocity at which the tool is going to move. And that will be based upon the units that you've already defined. So whatever units we've defined, G20 or G21, the F code will specify those units per minute. All moves after the appearance of the F code will uh, move at that speed. So an F50 would be 50 units per minute. Again, whatever those units are. You can set the F code uh, multiple times in your program, so you can change your feed rates throughout your program if necessary. Spindle speed is similar, uh, only we're specifying revolutions per minute. So that would be the actual rotation of the spindle. It will change the value that's stored in memory. Note that it will not turn the spindle on or off. It will only be used as the control value for the speed at which it should rotate. So you can set that speed when it's stationary or when it's rotating. Uh, usually it's good practice to set that spindle speed initially in your program uh, without the spindle rotating and then turn the spindle on uh, when necessary and off when necessary. Tool selection is based upon a tool library and the uh, example here that you see with this Haas, Haas machine configuration we have indexes, tool indexes, corresponding to physical positions in the library. So we use the T code to identify which position in the library we want to refer to. And then we can select based upon uh, that position. So we start at one and then we work our way around to the last number corresponding to the tool. Of course, the machine doesn't know anything about the tool in the tool library. Uh, that's for you to define and know which tool you're selecting. Then there's some miscellaneous codes that you should be aware of that are important for uh, running the actual program. Clearly, if we want to have the program stop, we're going to have to use an M0. An M2, meaning the program it has ended. M3, we can control the spindle. So here's where we turn the uh, spindle speed on or off. And then our M5, we can stop the spindle. M6, we're going to perform a tool change. This goes back to our value for T, whatever it's set to uh, in the tool library. And then we can put coolant on in terms of a mist or flooding the workpiece. And then we can shut that off. So these are pretty basic codes. Note that they're miscellaneous because they don't directly relate to uh, the motion of the tool as it uh, moves along the workpiece. What happens when you want to change a tool? Well, first thing is you have to specify an M6 code in your program. At that point, the spindle is going to stop because we're going to change the collet. And the current tool is going to be moved to its position in the tool library. The new tool that was specified by the, the T value, so T1, T2, and so forth, prior to uh, our M6 is placed in the spindle. The spindle is still stopped, so of course you're going to have to start it up again in order to run your program. In terms of coordinates, they follow the machine axes, so it will be specific to the machine configuration that you are dealing with, so you better know what that configuration is. It will represent a reference point on the tool. So when you think of an XYZ location, you can usually think of a center, but that's not always the case, such as in a turning center. But it is a reference point associated with the tool. That coordinate can be an absolute specification with respect to the home position or a G54, G55, and so forth. Or it could be relative to the previous position. The home position, and uh, it could be the machine home or a G54, G55, corresponds to 000. Note that you need to explicitly define which axis you are uh, moving along. And so we have to specify X, Y, or Z 
before the number. If there is no specification for a given axis, then it will maintain its position along that axis. So there's no need to have redundant uh, coordinates in terms of either x, y, or z. When you're dealing with your numeric values for the coordinates, always use a preceding zero. And always use a decimal point, no more than four decimal places. So right off the bat here, you can see that we've got deviations on the order of the fourth decimal place. Now, of course, that doesn't take into account the uh, accuracy of the machine tool itself, but you can see there's going to be a round-off error related to our tolerances. So when we think of our tolerances, how will the four decimal places affect that? If it does, uh, then that would be of concern. Your absolute and relative coordinate modes uh, by default, and again, don't rely on machine defaults, but it's going to be an absolute uh, system. But it's a good practice to specify it explicitly. So if all your moves are going to be absolute, then you should put a G90, uh, and it has to be set prior to G54. Otherwise, what will happen, and there is some variation from controller to controller, but typically the G54 will be reinitialized to the original machine home, 000. So the sequence in which these codes appear can be important. If you're going to go to the relative mode, uh, then you want to use the G91, and that will be with respect to that current position. So these are uh, typical best practices in terms of relative location of the codes in your program. Usually what you're going to have in the preface to your program is a section or a header in which you specify a set of standard declarations such as what will the units be, what will the feed rate be, spindle speed, turn the spindle off, select a tool for the first operation, change the tool, turn the spindle on, set your coordinate mode, which coordinate system are we using, and then of course uh, some uh, tooling related codes. Don't worry about these for right now. We'll come back to that later on. And then, of course, at some point we're going to stop uh, in the program and stop the execution of that program. So again, these tend to be the, the uh, sequence in which you appear now. Can I set the spindle speed before the feed rate? Of course, that's not going to have any impact. Uh, and spindle off is just a precaution to make sure that it's explicitly defined as being off at the beginning of your program. So, what do we do with numerical control? We control the axes of a machine tool. And by controlling those axes, indirectly, we can control the motion of a tool along its tool path. And so a lot of the codes that you're going to use are going to relate to that tool path. We have to understand the configuration of the machine axes for the specific machine we're using in order to create the program to control the tool. So NC code primarily is written to specify the geometry of the tool path. But as we've seen, there are some other codes that we're going to have to use in order to support uh, miscellaneous functions such as tool changes, coolant, and the like. Toolpaths will be derived from the design specification, so we have to go back to the design specification, understand the geometry <clears throat> that we need to create in terms of surfaces, and determine what the process parameter should be based upon the material and the type of operation that's being performed. Note that all your NC code is being executed sequentially, beginning at the first line and ending with your program end. 